welcome back to my channel. This is the first video, I think in about two to three weeks. Um, I've just been really busy because we put out our very first e-cookbook, which I'm very excited to tell you guys about. So um, on Halloween, we put out our first volume of our first series of ebooks. This has 30 whole food plant-based, SOS-free recipes specifically for weight loss. I decided to put in all the recipes that I use to lose 80 pounds on my journey of becoming whole food plant-based and incorporating this lifestyle. And so this first book just came out. There's gonna be a second and third volume. Each will contain 30 recipes. Again, they're SOS-free, delicious. They make two servings, so it should be pretty easy to follow and make. So you're, if you're the only one in your house trying to lose weight, this could be perfect for you to try out. So I will put a link down below. You can get it printed if you want at a print shop or a library. Um, I did get ours printed here. Turns out to be a really pretty um, cookbook if you get it printed, but you also can just print out individual pages of the recipes you want to try. And again, this is on our website. I will link down below if you're interested. It is an e-cookbook, so you just get the PDF of the recipe book, um, not a physical copy. So I just want to make that clear. Um, today we're going to be making a really fun recipe. We're actually making our Thanksgiving platter. This is what I'm serving for our Thanksgiving this year as a main dish. And it's delicious. You can swish it up multiple different ways. It's easy. It's simple. It doesn't have to be a Thanksgiving main. You can make it a side or even just enjoy it around Thanksgiving or Christmas. It doesn't have to be specifically just for Thanksgiving. It's healthy, it's simple, and I'm so excited to share this with you. So down below and on our website, we have a free printable PDF that you can print off and make at your own desire. You don't have to take notes, um, but we're gonna get started. So for this recipe, you do cook two things ahead of time. I have two cups of lentils that I cooked. You can use brown, black, green lentils, anything but red. Um, also, if you want to switch this out for a bean, you definitely can as well. And you can use canned beans or canned lentils or cook foam from scratch, but it's around two cups. And then over here, I also have two cups of a whole grain that I've cooked. Today I'm using bulgur wheat, but you could use, you know, wild rice, you could use farro, quinoa, whatever whole grain you like. Really easy to switch it up and to always make this different. And then we'll go through the rest of the ingredients. So I have one small onion that I've chopped. I have one half cups of some shredded Brussels sprouts. Now, if you don't have Brussels sprouts, you can use any cabbage. It's really nice to have an extra little bit of crunch to this recipe. Um, I also have a half a cup of celery chopped in the recipe. I'm actually out of celery today, so sometimes if I'm out, we'll just swap in some chopped broccoli. Uh, so that's a really easy swap as well. I have one large apple that I've diced up, and then over here, I have one fourth cup of dried fruit. Now this is, really is, um, the apples and the dried fruit add a new flavor and texture and sweetness to this dish, so you can add any kind of dried fruit you like. We've done raisins, apricots, today I have some dried cherries. Um, just make sure you read the directions or the ingredients of the packaging to make sure there's no oil involved as well. You can find a whole bunch of options at Trader Joe's. That's usually where we go to get our dried fruit. So sometimes with the apricots or the cherries, I even like to cut them up into smaller pieces. That way you get a little piece of it in each bite of your meal. That's the way I like to do it. So you might want to chop it if it's large. Raisins are kind of the perfect size for it. And then I have one tablespoon of vegetable broth one teaspoon of white miso paste, and one tablespoon of Herbe de Provence, which is a seasonal blend. And you can find it in most grocery stores. Again, it's just a blend of spices. I will post a link to the spice information down below. We get ours at Trader Joe's. Um, it's really such a favorite, so you can find it around this time of year there if you have that store. But most grocery stores do carry this blend. It's awesome. This one has thyme, rosemary, basil, sage, and a little bit of lavender, which I really enjoy. 
And then I do have a little bit of dried parsley for garnishing. And sometimes I do like to add some kind of other kind of greens in here. So some kale that you've steamed is really nice as well. And we'll serve this on a big platter. I'm going to show you guys. Um, but there's some other ways to serve this as well. This is a great filling to make for stuffed acorn squash or even butternut squash. And so it can be really fancy. You can make it beautiful on your presentation of your Thanksgiving or even Christmas dinner and um, you know play around with it. Sometimes we also like to do cranberries mixed in and kind of change it up. This is just kind of a nice base for you. Okay so on your stovetop I'm going to turn mine on. This is an induction pan that we have. I'm going to add our red onions that I just have chopped here. You can use any onions you like. I tend to always buy the red ones when I'm at the grocery store. And we're just going to vegetable saute this with vegetable broth, um, you know, or you could do water if you don't have vegetable broth on hand. But no use for having oil here. And I just like to make sure it's translucent. And then literally what we're going to do is we're going to add everything into the skillet and we're just going to warm it. Now you also can transfer this to a baking dish and warm it in the oven. And it really depends what you'd like to do to serve it. If you'd like everything to be a little bit tender and softer and for the apples to kind of soften up, you know, you can bake it for a little bit in the oven or even keep it on here. If you'd like it to serve it more raw and crunchy, um, the apples to have a little bit more of a bite, everything to be more raw, you know, that's fine as well. It's totally up to you what you want to serve. So sometimes, depending on when we're serving this, I like to serve this as a really warm dish, fresh out of a warm oven. And sometimes I like to serve it more room temperature and everything has a little bit more of a crisp bite to it. So again, personal preference, this is your meal. Um, if you want to use a stuffed acorn squash or butternut squash, we usually will stuff it and put it back in the oven just for a little bit. Everything is cooked, so you know it really can be your preference of how warm or hot or cold you want to serve this. It's your Thanksgiving, you should make it to what you like. And I just love this dish because, you know, it's so easy to pair it with a salad or some kind of steamed greens. And really you have such a complete meal because we have our whole grain, we have our beans, and then we have all this delicious extra things that we're adding. And again, you can play it up. If you're not a fan of Brussels sprouts, adding in some shredded cabbage is really nice. If you don't have celery, you can add carrots or broccoli or we've done baby bok choy before. And if you don't have an apple, you could do a pear even and have fun with it. So I would love to hear your combination of what you try in the comments down below. And that's really how I love to cook. You know, I think especially with the pandemic and not there was a time period where I was going grocery shopping a lot less. Um, it was really nice to kind of grab things that you can switch out. Whatever whole grain, whatever lentil, whatever bean you have really works. The only thing I would stay away is red lentils because they tend to disintegrate whenever you're cooking them. And it's just such a nice, unique flavor. And I love it because it's it has such a beautiful range of ingredients that it's really, really satisfying. And you can make this as a beautiful, you know, platter is how we're going to serve it this year. So I'll have a big platter. You can double this recipe if you have a really large family and it's just such a great hit. It really does, it could be a stuffing, it can be um, on its own and it's just really lovely and easy. So if you are stressed out about what to bring for Thanksgiving, try this recipe out. It really hits everyone in your family, I promise. And what I love about it is that, you know, it's so simple. So Thanksgiving, usually you're cooking the entire day, making all of your sides. You know, it's really nice to have an easy recipe that you can just quickly throw together. And also you can make it the day before, which is really nice. So think about that while you're planning, planning this holiday meal. And like I said, even if it's not Thanksgiving, it's just a great warming meal that we tend to make a lot more during the holidays. So my onions are translucent now, which means that's done. And really, it's so easy. We're just going to dump in the rest of the ingredients. So I have my bulgur wheat that I added for my whole grain. I have some brown lentils. And you can just use even the canned if you just rinse and drain, which is even easier. 
go ahead and incorporate that. I have my pan on medium heat, let everything kind of warm up. And now we're gonna dump in the rest. So this is the Brussels sprouts that are shredded. A little crunch is really nice. If you're not a fan of Brussels sprouts, um, try shredding them and putting them in. It's just a really nice way of getting cabbage in. And you know, I love cruciferous vegetables, so that's awesome. Instead of celery, I have some chopped broccoli. You can use whatever you'd like in place of that. Like I said, sometimes we do shredded carrots. I have my one large apple. You could use a pear. That's a great substitute. Sometimes we put pomegranate seeds in as well. It already looks so beautiful. I have my dried cherries. And I like to let the apples soften just a little bit to kind of release some of their juice as well, which is a nice flavor booster. And then I'm gonna add in our seasoning. So this is Herbs de Provence, which is a seasoning blend. I call it Thanksgiving in a jar. You can play around with the seasonings too if you like more rosemary, if you don't like rosemary, if you wanna put in chives, or um, you know whatever your family personally likes. It smells so good. That seasoning really does elevate it. Thanksgiving can be easy, I promise. And then a little bit of white miso paste. Now this is our salt substitute. You can always leave this out, but I do feel like it does enhance the flavors. I'm just gonna add it in now. And you know, I just make sure that's stirred in really well. And we use white miso paste, um, again, if you followed us for any period of time, um, we use a little bit in our recipes because Dr. Greger, um, you know, and other plant-based doctors like Dr. Quacker have recommended that, you know, you could use it and won't affect your blood pressure or your heart. And so, you know, I have found that it hasn't affected mine and I really enjoy, I feel like it makes being plant-based a little bit more enjoyable, especially if you're trying to get people in your family on board and they're trying, you know, we don't use any other salt in our house. So that's a really nice way of elevating the flavors, bringing out it. So I'm just going to give everything a nice stir and make sure that miso paste is really incorporated well. And you have a beautiful Thanksgiving, I call it Thanksgiving platter, but this is 100% what we're serving as our main dish. Could be a beautiful side dish. Again, you can add greens to this if you want to add spinach or broccoli or, um, you know, you could add in cauliflower even. You could put in kale. We like to serve some steamed kale with it. And I put it in a beautiful dish. And you guys have a great Thanksgiving meal or side. And you could always stuff it in acorn squash or butternut squash as well. You could even add some squash into this, dice up some squash that's cooked and put this in to make it even more hearty. But the entire family is gonna love it. And I hope you guys will give it a try. So make sure you leave us a comment down below. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you go check out and print off the recipe. Um, and I would love to know what you do in yours. Again, being whole food plant-based does not have to be, um, you know, there's so many options. It's so limitless with combinations. And so I'd love to see what you do this this holiday season and I think this is going to be such a hit so leave us a comment subscribe I will see you guys later if you're interested in the ebook check it out down below I worked really hard on it and I'm so excited to give you guys some weight loss recipes that I use that I lost 80 pounds on um, and I again will post the recipes that are included in this first book on the screen now so you guys can check it out and um, I'll see you guys real soon thanks so much for watching I hope you guys enjoy this. Let us know if you like it. And I'll see you guys real soon for the next one. Bye.